Hello. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It's always great. Way, good way to get started here. I'm going to set this over this way a little bit so I can walk out a little bit. Okay. My name's Kyle Hudson. I'm one of the sysadmins here for Bayocat. Uh, the other sysadmin is back here in the corner. This is Adam. A lot of you have corresponded a lot with us via email, and so that now you can get a face with it. This is Dave Turner. He's our new guy. Uh, he is our optimization application specialist person. Come in. And uh, so he's going to be helping us out here today. His voice is still a little gone. We've all had colds within the last week. Got it all through the department, I guess, sir. So, I, I, matter of fact, yesterday my plan was to come in this morning and buy lots of Sudafed and be doped up. And I woke up this morning and said, hey, this isn't so bad. I think I can make it anyway. So, I'm just getting over it. Adam's just getting over it. Dave's still got it for a bit. So, you might want to scoot down from him just to. <laughs> um, Dan Andreessen is our is our apartment uh, head. Where'd my dad gun it? I want to look back here. He's not out of town today, so he's not going to be here. Normally, he likes to be on these things too. Um, this is I try to make this really interactive. Feel free to ask questions whenever through here, that kind of thing. Uh, if you need a drink or bathroom, they're uh, down here at the atrium, just outside this hallway. There's some water fountains just inside the atrium, and the bathrooms are off to the right there. Um, I promise I won't be offended if you need to get up and go for any reason, whatever. Your phone calls, somebody had one a little bit ago, whatever. We're we're pretty flexible. We're easygoing guys, so you know if there's a point of clarification, whatever, please feel free to bring it up. That kind of thing. Um, we got kind of four sections here today. The first one just kind of an introduction to uh, Linux and high performance computing. So first of all, we have the section I call tools of the trade. These are what we need to get in. How many of you are current Bayocat users? Is that pretty much everybody? No? Got a couple that aren't? Well, the first thing you need, well actually the first thing you need is to get an account, which I'm assuming the fact that you got the email that you all have an account, so we're gonna skip over that part. If not, get a hold of us, yes. For, oh, for this? For, for the computer series, what you're saying? Or what? Or, um, Seth is a guy, person to ask on this. <laughs> He's our department guy. These are all department computers, and, and so you have to have a department login for that. Um, I'm going to bring up a couple of them that you uh, may or may not have known about. Most people know about Putty. Is that what most people use to get in from Windows? Yes, no, maybe so, yes. Um, a few people have been using Sigwin. There's a new one out there called MOBA Xterm, and I really like this. I'm going to demonstrate it for you real quick here just because I've been rather impressed with what it does. And I'm actually not going to log into Bayocat because I don't know my EID password. I have to look it up and take me a lot longer. But I do know my CIS department password. It all looks the same here. So this is MOBA Xterm. And I, I just put a session in. I could, I could create a new session. All I'll do is type in the, the username or the, the, the name just like you would in Putty. Matter of fact, it'll even import your Putty sessions. If you already have Putty, it'll say, oh, I know what that is from Putty. So you don't have to put anything else in there. I'm going to go here to my CS account. It says ask for my login, put in my username, and my password. And that brings up another one. It's the SFTP password. And you can save this if you want if you're on your own machine. This is not even my own machine, so I can't do that. No, I don't want to save that. And the nice thing you see is over here, now it lists all the files and stuff I have over here. So if I have a file on my desktop, okay. Let's see if there's any documents here. No, not really. Okay, I'm going to create a file. Blah. File, save as, 
blah.txt. Okay. So now I have a file called blah.txt in my documents. So here's my file. I can take MOBA X term over here and just drag and drop this over here. And we'll copy those files back and forth. So that way you have the same uh, user interface for both your, your login. So you're not switching back and forth between WinSCP or FileZilla, which is the way most people use to copy files in and out or SCPing files in and out. You can use it all as one. You can just drag and drop straight from Windows. Yes. Yes. It's free. Um, if you have like more than a dozen sessions, it limits you, that kind of thing. But for 90, I, I use the free version. I use SSH a lot. So, and actually it'll also do RDP if you if you use window, Windows hosts. So it'll, it'll do a lot of different things all at once. I use this all the time. Yes. I couldn't understand. Say it again. It does not save the changes to file most of the time. I'm mainly using What does it change to say? When you change, you need a find. You do a find? Find. Editing. Uh, editing a file, okay. Uh -huh. When you made a change somewhere, it does not save again. Where are you editing the file? On, on your Windows? Mm -hmm. So okay, here's my one. I just this one, not like yeah. like here. Yeah. Oh, fine. So I edit it and put it back. And now. There it is. There we yeah, so there it is. Are you just talking within MOBA X term? You've, you've done this before? Yeah. I have not seen that problem. <laughs> Sorry. I wish I could tell you better, anything better than that, but I've not seen that. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm wondering, if there's not an automatic... But the way that Mobile Excerpt should do that automatically, it should download, edit, and then re-upload again. Right. Is there another question here? Is it? Okay. So anyway, like I said, it's, it's just a nice interface. It kind of replaces both your WinSCP and our FileZilla and Putty, kind of all in one, all, all as one executable there. So, like I said, I use it a lot. Feel free to use, you know, uh, if you go Google MOBA X term, you'll find it. Uh, just a helpful hint there. Uh, also on Windows, like I said, we mentioned FileZilla and WinSCP. Those are our graphical interfaces to transfer files in and out. We use protocols uh, SCP and SFTP on Beocat, which is pretty common on Unix systems. Um, there are also command line based stuff. If you're into the Mac world, uh, there are, I don't know if there are any good graphical clients for SCP on Mac. FileZilla does. Uh, and CyberDuck is weird. I've used CyberDuck and it's kind of a strange one, but it can be done. Um, but there are command line utilities. If, you, if you're used to Linux land and used to the command line, which I live about 90% of my life in command line, so it doesn't bother me any but I understand that I'm unusual in that regard. I've been called unusual for a lot of different reasons, but that's not usually that reason. Um, but I do, I spend most time in the command line, so it doesn't bother me, you know, typing commands out. But those graphical interfaces a lot of times help. How many of you guys are primarily Windows, Linux, or Mac? Let's try Windows. Big majority, Mac. Few, Linux, anybody? Oh, there are some Linux guys. All right, good. So, uh, actually, FileZilla does work on Linux also, if, if you do like the graphical environment. Um, it's kind of a strange package. It's all, uh, probably look, want to look in your distribution files for, for what's there if, if you're 
if you're using on Linux. But it does work, and like I said, if you the command line SSH and SCP do work fine. Now, we do have, let's back up. Yeah, I mentioned that a few of these are noob safe. So you guys that said you can primarily do Linux, you're gonna be bored to death during this part because this is really, really basic stuff we're talking about here. All right, or if you have any extensive experience, just just as a forewarning, if you need to you know, go find some coffee or whatever, I won't be offended. So most of the stuff I've taken in from, from, this, from this area, uh, this web page, it's if you go to support.bayocat.ksu.edu, which most of you guys probably should be fairly familiar with, that is our uh, support wiki. We have not had anybody besides ourselves edit the wiki. Anybody who's a Bayocat user has the ability to do that. If you see our documentation lacking, please update it. We have no problems with this. That's why we have it out there. So have at it. I mentioned some of these things for uh, uh, the things I just went over. Next part, it gets into transferring files. That's how we get our programs and our data files in and out of Bayocat. It uses SCP or SFTP. And there's examples on how to do this here on this site too. I'm not gonna bore you with the details here. And some basic Linux commands. Now, um, so you, you guys that are into Linux, uh, how many of you spend much time with the command line on Linux? Somewhat? Okay, a couple of concepts we have to, we're, we're gonna try to have you understand here. Um, the fir first of all is the term directory. That is what, f that's kind of analogous to the Windows folder or the Mac folder. It's just a, a folder that holds other files. For historical reasons, they've always called it a directory on Unix and Linux systems. And so that's the terminology we use. Um, if we're looking, Back to my MOBEX term here. You can see all my all these here are my folders. So I can look inside this folder and there's more files inside there. That's called a directory. Um, a shell. A shell is the environment that you operate under. I bring up the wrong oh, opened up there. Okay. It's the environment that you operate your commands in. Most by default on campus, everybody uses what's called TCSH or something C shell. You know what T the T in it is? 10X C shell. It used to be CSH and they came out with a better one and it's called TCSH. That's the one that comes default on campus. Most people have spent much time at all uh, using Unix and Linux have changed to bash or ZSH at this point. Um, if you, there, there's some uh, commands listed on this page on how to change that if you want to. Oh, you, we do set it for to bash? I did not know we did that, okay. So, the, there's not a whole lot of difference in the way that they actually run commands. It's more in the way of the way variables are handled and that kind of thing. Uh, most, of, most of the world uses bash. Uh, SSH, SSH stands for secure shell. Now back when I was going to school here, we used Telnet, which is a completely unsecure protocol. That's how everybody got around everything. And they realized this is a really bad idea because anybody could sniff passwords and things like that. So they don't use that anymore. Matter of fact, it's kind of outlawed on campus. So we use uh, SSH, SSH is secure shell. It's a fully encrypted connection. It's how we talk, it's, how, it's the, it can bo both refer to the protocol of how you talk to it, and it can refer to the program. Uh, in our case, MOBA X term or PuTTY, that is what we call your SSH client. That's how you're talking to Bayocat. Uh, SCP is secure copy. It's a, uh, it's a part of the SSH protocol, and it allows files to be transferred in and out of, of Bayocat and any other Unix Linux system. 
your path. Now, if I go over here to my English account and I say echo path, this is going to show me all of the areas that it's going to look for executable files. So if I tell it to run something, I have to tell it explicitly where to go unless it's in my path. It's going to search through. If I say run the program boo, it's going to look for user bin boo, bin boo, user lib JVM default Java boo, and so on and so forth. Notice that the current directory is not in that list by default. You have to add that yourself if you want to be there. A lot of times, especially people come from Windows, they're used to being able to have executable files in the folder that you're in. And we can't do that on Linux unless we add it explicitly in here, and that's to keep you from accidentally running the wrong thing. Ownership. Every file and directory has a user and group attached to it called its owners. If I do list here, you'll see that all my files and folders here have a user of Kyle Hudson and a group of Kyle Hudson users. Uh, on Beocad, it's the same way. By default, all your files will have this ownership. It affects the permissions. Now, the permissions we'll see listed over here on the side. All these, these RWX on everything, that tells you read, write, and execute. So that means that for this first file, which the document that we were working on today, the Beocad introduction, I have me being the user, Kyle Hudson user, has read and write access to it. The Kyle Hudson users group, which I don't have anybody else in my users group except for me right now, but I could add them. So they have, would have read access, no write access, no execute access. And the, the, the last bit of three is the entire the rest of the world. So the rest of the world would have read permission, no write, and no execute permission on that. Some useful commands here that we might, these, these are kind of the, the sort of the basic things that we expect you to be able to, to navigate in, in Beocat. PWD is the, shows your print working directory is what it stands for. So, you notice I did PWD and it says homes, or is home K Kyle Hudson. That's my home directory. That's where I happen to be look, looking. That's where the where, where this shell is looking at right now. Um, on Beocat, when you first log in, it would say homes, Kyle Hudson. Matter of fact, let me log in to Beocat here just to so you can kind of see. Got to pull out my password manager here. That's right. And if I can't get the password to my password manager, right, I'll never get in. Okay. I think this is the first time I've actually typed my password. Dang it. Timed out. Are there any questions so far? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you 
should be able to use that and create files and then uh, uh, have that pop in here. So now you can kind of see the difference. My working director is now Holmes Kyle Hudson. That's a default on Bayocat. The ls command will list the files and, and folders in the current directory. And there's some switches you can put on there, like some of the more useful ones. You just said, I do, I do ls by itself. That'll just give you a, a, a full list of the files, but no more information than that. I can do a ls dash lh. The l means long listing, h means human readable. So this will tell me not only all this uh, in permission and owner information, but it'll also tell me how big the file is in, in human readable form. So like a 280 meg file here, if I have that in bytes, you might have to be counting how many columns there are and things like that. The H is kind of handy on that. The ls-a, if we look at it, that'll include all these like dot files, which are normally any, any file that starts with a, with a period is, uh, is not shown on a regular directory listing. You can see it at Mo, uh, MOBA, Xterm will show it. Most, most clients don't show these unless you tell it explicitly to do that. Because these are that's how you, that's basically how you hide directories because stuff that no, normally like system files things you don't need to worry about much so but the, if you do the dash a command on ls it'll show you all of them including everything that starts with a period we have more people than seats I'm really sorry <laughs> I was really surprised at how many people showed up for this today You know, so I use the ls command a lot, just kind of see where I'm at. Um, the cd command will change directories. Again, we call them directories instead of folders, so that's why these things kind of make some sense. So I'm going to change directory to, let's find something here, temp. This is a folder that I've already got out there. So say cd temp. And now I do my directory listing, there's no files in that. That was a pretty boring one. I usually have files in my temp folder. What do I have there? Yeah, that's too much. There we are. So I changed to another directory. I changed to my rsync test directory. And here's some files that I've stuck out there. I don't even know what those were there for. I'll get rid of them soon. But. <laughs> But now when I do my directory listing, my ls, it shows what's in that directory, not all the stuff that was up there before, because I'm just looking at that current directory. Along with that, uh, there are some special name directories. There, if you use the tilde, that brings you back to your home directory. If you use a dot dot, it brings you to the directory above it. So here, if I do cd dot dot, I go from being in my rsync test directory back to my home directory. And we got a few useful commands here that we, uh, that we use quite a bit. Um, cat will just simply display the output of a file uh, on the screen. Again, you notice that you don't have mouse control and that kind of stuff when you're in an SSH session. That's not part of the SSH protocol. It won't do it even if you wanted it to. So you might be able to copy and paste some, some text, but you're not going to be able to actually use the mouse to interact. So uh, the, the easy thing to do to get the output of a file 
is to use the cat, cat command that'll just take the, up, the contents of the file and spit it out on the screen. Uh, CP copies a file, I'm not gonna go through all these, MV for move, RM for, re for remove, and then there's some, uh, for manipulating directories, you can RM, make your remove directory, that kind of thing. I'm just gonna refer you to this page at this point, I'm seeing lots of people looking bored here. So. Um, finding is, files is kind of useful sometimes too. Um, again, I'm just gonna kind of refer you to this so you know that it's out there. Uh, when you're searching on your own desktop, you can, you can install some commands that let you find things really fast. When you're searching 600 terabytes of data, it'd take over a day to index it all, and by the time you got it done, it'd be time to start the next day. So that's why we don't have those tools installed on Beocat. So if you're looking for files you, to find them, we're gonna have to use the find command, and here's a, a uh, just some, uh, some quick examples on that. Yes? I couldn't use um, LS and just say find something. If you have, yeah, the, uh, LS will show what's in your current directory, but if you're looking for something that may be five directories levels deep and you don't know where it is, that's where the find command comes in handy. If you have, you know, you have a subdirectory for this project and then you have these data files and these data files and then some subdirectory there, finding them can be a real pain in the butt. So that's why we, that's why we, that's why you would use the find command. Um, editing text files. There's a very easy editor installed out there called Nano. And this is, uh, we showed how to do it in, most people, the way they use it is they take files and they manipulate them on their own PC and then they send them back and forth. However, if you only have a little change to make, especially uh, using a text editor actually in, on, on Beocat is a handy thing to have. So let's see, I think I saw a text file there. I don't even know what's in here. Oh yeah, I don't remember we're doing this. Okay, I think I was actually just setting up a test using some files I didn't care about. Um, so here's just a text file. And get out of here. I'm, I'm used to using VI. If you use Linux on a regular basis, you're going to want to learn how to use VI. Its learning curve looks about like a wall when you first start it. Matter of fact, the first question people usually have is, okay, how do I get out of here? because it's not obvious how you get out of there and everything you try doesn't work. So it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's really tough to get started on. Once you get started on it, you'll never wanna go back to anything else and that's why you'll see me probably using VI for, uh, for editing files. We're gonna use Nano. And let's just say I wanted to get rid of that first line. So I'm just gonna hit the delete button here. These, it gives you some help down here at the bottom. The little carrots mean the control. So I can say, I'm going to exit with control X. And I'll say, do you want me to, do you want to save it? Yes. And file name to write. And by default, it tells you the same thing that you already had before. And apparently I didn't have permission on that file. I'm gonna say no. So that's kind of, like I said, you only see it in, in it's only text format stuff, but most of the data people work with is text format. So if you can, if you, if you have especially, say especially small changes, that's a lot useful not to have to transfer files, especially the big files, copy them back to your desktop, edit them, copy them back, that type of thing. You can edit them straight on Beocat. And like I say, VI is very handy for that kind of thing too. Uh, a little discussion about shells in your path, ownership and permissions. I've kind of gone over most of these things. Uh, man pages, if you need to know how to run a command, if you know what the command is but you don't know what the exact syntax is, that's what man pages are for, they call them man, they're for the system manual. So man is the command to do that. The, back in the early days of Unix, uh, everything was, space was at a premium. That's why they abbreviated everything and they didn't even type the full word move, it was MV. You didn't even type the word copy, it was CP. Everything was as short as possible. So it's telling them that instead of asking for the manual, they'd ask for the man. So they just cut it off and that's one of those things that's legacy and it's stuck around forever and people still use it today. Pipes and redirects, this is some pretty neat stuff. Um, 
this is kind of the heart of it right there. You can take the output from a command and stick it to a file. Uh, do the same thing except append to the file. You can take the, instead of typing things into a command, you can bring it, you can send the file name to the input and you can take two commands and have the output of one go to the in, in, input of the other. You can string together lots and lots of these together. If you spend a whole lot of time on Unix systems, I might have five or six of these pipes on, on a single command line. Just taking, say, the output of this, take the output of this, take the output of this, put them all together. And one other command, and I, it's brought up down here a little bit, is grep. Grep is find me the contents of, of show any lines of the file that match this. So like this is ls, which is showing the directory listing. The grep command says find everything that ends with .sh. So I take the output of my ls, take that to the input of grep, which says find, any, find anything in what I type that, that ends in .sh, but that comes from the output of the ls command, and then it takes all that and it puts it into a text file. So you say you're, you're taking the input, the input, the input, all stringing them all together and, and putting it into a single output file. That's kind of a really brief introduction. You could really spend days talking about, you know, even basic Linux stuff. But these are the kind of things that you, pretty much everybody should need to know to be able to, you know, the, when, you, when you ask us a question, these are the things that we are going to assume that you know. And if not, we're going to have to refer you to these pages and have you take a look at this yourself. Okay, that should be the most boring part of the day, I hope. <laughs> yes, question. How exactly is a shell? What is a shell? That's the environment which it runs in. Matter of fact, we even talk about it a little bit up here. There is a Wikipedia page that talks about it in all sorts of great detail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But but it's it's kind of the way the way things are set up so it'll run commands. That's that's the the interactive environment that you're under. So this is just a very very short uh, introduction to uh, Unix or Linux. If you need more information than this, uh, there are a lot of tutorials on the web, uh, Google Linux tutorial or something like that. If you, uh, you can't find a good one, then uh,